on this week's podcast, we are talking to licensed Reiki master teacher, Carolyn Musial. She's also a mentor teacher and director of the licensed teachers. She's been a full-time Reiki teacher and practitioner since 2003. She lives Reiki with everything she does and with every breath that she takes. She recognizes and understands that all is one and that we share a connection through the divine within. Carol's also, Carolyn is also known for her talks at the Reiki retreat on animal communication. And so I just knew that our listeners would want to hear from you today. Welcome, Carolyn. Thank you, Pam. It's really awesome to be here. This subject is just so near and dear to my heart. And, and hopefully between two of us, because you obviously do animal communication also, and I think we'll be able to share information and experiences, maybe even some of the stories and the different things we've learned from the animals. And my hope always is just to give people maybe a look at things from a little bit of a different perspective and open to a deeper awareness of the world around us and maybe even like walk a little bit differently on the earth. So I thank you for inviting me. I'm happy to be here, but with that said, would you like to introduce yourself for the, the people that are with us? That's <laughs> I probably should. <laughs> I'm a, good idea. a licensed Reiki master teacher with the International Center for Reiki Training. And I am also an animal communicator and have uh, taught animal communication sessions for years. I intend to write a book about animal communication very soon, so I thought it might be really fun for us to have a conversation and, like you said, really help people um, see from the animal's perspective um, what's happening. And uh, But before we begin, I just wanted to let people know about some of the classes that we have coming up on the farm. In mid-September, I will be starting a new Reiki Master Mentors session for um, people who are Reiki masters and would like a little help to get their businesses going and would like to have a mentor. These are group sessions and you can find out about that in the link in the podcast. I also have some licensed Reiki, animal Reiki classes as well coming up in October and in December some licensed Reiki and animal Reiki and also an animal communication class coming up. Um, and those are mostly in the Atlantic and Eastern time zones. They're all online. Carolyn, what do you have coming up? Well, I'm in the Eastern time zone also because I'm actually physically located in Buffalo, New York. And um, I've got my Reiki classes coming up. It just I, I teach a couple of times a month. So I've got um, actually come now that I think about it, September is an animal Reiki one and two. Um, and then in October, I've got, I have a, a master class in November, a regular Reiki one and two class and in December, another master class. So I get my information maybe in the link also, I'm not sure. Yes. yes. I'll also have a link to your website and I think your calendar is right there. It is. It yeah. is very definitely on my, on my, so yeah, if anyone's interested, reach out and we can, can answer any questions. Thank you so much. And further, before we get into our conversation, I'd just like to ask everybody to um, join me in an invocation so that we can all bring our Reiki energy in today. So I invite you to close your eyes, take some deep breaths, and bring your hands into Gasho with your thumbs at your heart. And breathe. As the light of the divine earth flows up through the bottoms of your feet and the light from the heart of God shines down through the top of your head and they meet together in your heart. Causing your heart light to shine out in front of you, behind you, on each side, above you, below you and within you. Many people believe that telepathic communication originates in the head, but in fact, it is in the heart space. And so just allow that expansion of your own heart space today. Inviting your Reiki energy to flow. Inviting any symbols to join you if you have symbols. 
And today we invite you to consider a different perspective, the perspective of the animals. We are all here together today because of a deep love of the animals and of the earth. For all of our differences, we want to leave the earth a better place. We open our hearts and receive. We receive the opportunity to learn through the consideration of another perspective today. Aho and namaste. <laughs> Thank you. Lovely. Thank you, Pam. <laughs> Carolyn, you are known for your animal communication talks at the ICRT Reiki retreat, which is actually happening this weekend. Um, I wonder if you can tell me a little bit about your Reiki journey and how it led to you becoming an animal communicator or learning animal communication. Okay. Well, I, I actually took my first Reiki class in April of 1998 very hard to believe that 23 years ago. And my background is left brain analytical. I worked in corporate America for 28 years. I love sharing that with people because, you know, I'm, I'm not the far out one who saw auras and talked to angels and no, I was left brain analytical, always work. You know, that's, that's the way that they, I used to test when in corporate America used to do those tests. So, but I reached a point where I knew something was missing in my life and I had to go find what it was. And, and I found Reiki or Reiki found me as we well know it does. And um, started working with Reiki and certainly daily self Reiki from that very first class in, in 1998. And then I've always adored animals. I've always had a connection with animals. Cannot say that I always had a communication with animals, but and it was what was frustrating for me is that I always felt that the animals could understand me. I always felt they could, whether or not they wanted to do what I wanted them to do was something else, but I knew they understood me. I didn't know how to understand them and how to communicate better with them. So the more that I worked with Reiki and the more that I opened up and did some of my own self-healing and open to the guidance, then I, I actually was guided to take a class in animal communication, actually took three different classes back, I, I'm not even sure how many years ago, probably 20 years ago, at a farm in, in downstate New York that was a rescue farm. And my teacher, Don Hyman, was like a farm girl who had talked to animals all her life. And they really opened me up to a different way of being. And it, and it, it was just a shift in perception that really opened me to, again, a different way of being in this world. And, and when we're talking about animal communication too, I, I think I just wanna make sure that everyone understands we're talking about all of nature. I mean, mm -hmm. you, could, you could communicate and have a connection with any, any animal or bird or tree or lake or mountain. Um, so that's how I started with it. And, um, and, and, I, and along the way, I've just, I, I, I've only taught a few classes and Pam and I were just talking about that. Who knows where we're going to be down, where, where she and I will be for teaching animal communication down the line. But, um, but I've also, I've all, the animals have always wanted me to share the information so that people can open up and understand that they can do this on their own. Mm -hmm. That's one of the most important things. I love that. And, and it's, it's interesting too, Carolyn, isn't it? Because it's, it's not something that was natural for me either. It's something Reiki brought me to. And it was actually through another course, through uh, a, a horse clinic around Linda Kohanov's Dow of Equus work that it opened up for me that I could communicate. And before that, I was so resisting opening up to my intuition. My intuition was precognizant and it frightened me. And I shut it down and but the reiki energy really wanted it opened back up again and um and i remember i wound up teaching that horse clinic and word got around 
that people could hear the animals. They could understand the animals after they took the horse clinic. And a dear, she's a dear friend now, but I didn't know her at the time, called me and said, now listen, there's a bunch of us, we hear people are, can hear the animals after your horse class. And I said, yeah, that's true. Well, we don't wanna do a whole weekend. We don't wanna do all that spiritual mumbo jumbo. We don't even, we're not even interested in horses. We love cats. We want you to teach us in one day, just how to communicate. Can you do that? And I said, no, I don't think I can. Like, you know, I wasn't interested in teaching another course, but I remember, um, one of the things about animal communication, so you said, you know, you wind up communicating with everything. And that's like a, a little uh, disclaimer or a little warning that I put on my animal communication class is that this also opens you up to hearing spirit or, you know, hearing God or the other side, whatever name you like to use. And um, so I remember after I told her, no, I couldn't do that. I got a tap on the shoulder uh, and I was told you can do that. It would be quite easy. <laughs> and I was shown how the agenda would have to change and what to take out and what to add in. And so I guess for the last 11 years, I've been teaching um, animal communication and <laughs> thanks to her. And I'm really grateful to her for that. <laughs> And like, what's interesting about that, Pam, is is mine was just the opposite. I was getting information from spirit and I was getting, you know, I'd be working with a client or something and I'd have information. And then and I I mean, can I can picture myself still like it was my first day of communication of animal communication class. And I was like, why I can why can't I do this with an animal? And I had a real clear vision of one of the horses from that the farm saying and what she her name was Gypsy. And what she said was spirit is spirit you know she said honor honor the spirit and not the shell and that kind of opened things up for me to again it was just that awareness of so I'm, I'm sure there are a lot of people out there who when they're doing reiki receive some kind of information or knowing or however it comes in and and in fact that that's like that's for me that was the place to start because people always say well how do i start and and you know where do i begin and to me, it's it's two things. Number one is attitude, because first of all, you have to know it's possible. Even if you yeah. don't believe you can do it, you've got to know it's possible. Because if you think you can't do it, it's like anything else in life. If you can't, if I, if you're saying I can't do this, you won't do it because you won't be open enough to do it. But when I say that's part of it, but attitude, I mean more about respecting the animal. Yeah, you've got you've got to view them as a spiritual being that you want to appreciate and communicate with, um, they're, they're not inferior. I happen to, I'm sure you agree. I think animals are much more spiritually advanced than we are. They understand, they get it. They, they, you know, they, they know what it's all about, but um, so attitude and that respect for all life and being humble as you, as you try to open to communicate. And, and I think the other thing that I've always thought is really, really important is understanding that all communication is telepathic. We don't think of it that way. <laughs> we think that it's words and we don't think of it as telepathic. And, and I think you've probably heard me say this before, but I just love to say to people, what, what happens if I say the words chocolate cake? <laughs> what happens? Do you see the cake? <laughs> do you taste the cake? Do you smell the cake? Do you see that picture again of the cake? I, I would hesitate. I, I, I pretty much can say that no one out there saw the words chocolate cake on a piece of paper. <laughs> so I'd love to use that as an example to say, this is how you're already communicating. You know, tele telepathy, you know, is, is connecting with someone across a distance all communication that you're doing is telepathic. You just need to shift your awareness ever so slightly to really realize you're already doing this. In fact, I, I'm sure you've had the same thing. You know, I, I don't necessarily do the animal communication professionally, but sometimes if I, you know, connect for a friend or something and the animals are always like, well, but when my mom hears me, they, they're sometimes they're just totally confused as to why you're even trying because they, they hear me. Well, they might hear you, but they're not consciously getting it. 
So, but I, I'm sure you are already doing this because that's pretty much the way that it works. So yeah, all communications, just think about chocolate cake. <laughs> Makes my point every time, every time. Well, and now I'm salivating, but, uh, <laughs> yeah. but no, I, I love that example. And you're right. Like, I mean, even scientifically, they talk about how only 10% of communication is verbal like of, of all communication. So when we think we're having a verbal conversation, it's our body language, it's our, our thoughts, our feelings, our emotions, people are getting all of it. And so you're right, it, it really is sort of below the surface and telepathic. And I noticed um, that there's almost an unlearning that has to take place because I think so often as children, um, we may have been told like, you know, stop talking to your imaginary friend. And I think children were maybe talking to their spirit guides or their angels or something like that. I think that's probably who the imaginary friend is. And I have people tell me, my cat is so stupid. She just sits there and looks at the wall. I'm like, she's not looking at the wall. There's an energy in your house that she's aware of, you know? And uh, so I don't know if you have anything to say to that, but I, I do. I mean, I just feel that they're they're so tuned in. And uh, yeah, I would agree with that as children. And I mean, even uh, you know, there probably are children who I mean, what what is the parent going to say when the child's telling them what the dog wants? Right. You know, if you, if, you, if you that's didn't. not encouraged as as a child or more than anything, I think sometimes, you know, as children, we probably all had that level of communication with animals, with our guides and so on, but no one verbally talks about it. Mm -hmm. And then as you get older, I mean, as you really begin talking and more and more with, you know, with communication, with conversation, that's where the focus is. And then we forget, we know the focus is not there. So we forget about all the rest of it. And we do leave, I think we do leave it behind. So I, I just think it's an innate ability that everyone has because again I repeat we're doing it already it's just a shifting the awareness a little bit into receptive mode because you know working if you're if you really do want to communicate it it can take so many all the different forms we've mentioned it could be it could be pictures it could be feeling it could be words I, I have a tendency Pam and I were just talking about this I have a tendency sometimes to write I, I can go into automatic writing and have like a whole conversation and, and beautiful words coming from the animal. But sometimes it's it's more of a of a melding of a oneness that is then sometimes difficult to translate. It's an amazing feeling. But if I were trying to share it with someone else, it can be a little bit difficult to explain. So, you know, the communication can take any form um, and however it's coming to you. And, and a lot of us work in, in many of those ways, not just one way. So it's just that openness and awareness of um, the many different ways that the information can come in. We're, we're not attached to one way that we think it should happen. That's, I think, what holds a lot of people back is they think it's supposed to be maybe like our conversation right now. And so if it's something else, if they're getting pictures or feelings or knowledge, they, they don't they don't believe it's coming through. And I know you said, um, you know, the animals that say, but they already hear me. Ninety to ninety five percent of the animal communication I do is simply confirming what the animals people already know you know and, and i have no way of knowing that but we'll go in and i'll say so this is what your animal's telling me and most of the time they're like yeah that's that sounds exactly that's what i was getting to or so it's almost like just a, a confirming if somebody that has no way of knowing is saying the same things then then that's what happens and i also find it interesting the other thing that you said just how to explain that because I find like my, I, I usually have a 50, 45 to 50 minute session for animal communication. And I book off about that much time and um, probably less than five minutes is spent communicating with the animal and the rest of the time is spent explaining the communication and what that means 
to the person. And so I don't know if you've had any experiences like that, Carolyn. Oh, well, and it's like anything with, you know, and it kind of like, like uh, remember the dog whisperer, you know, on TV that the, or, or a horse whisper. It's, it's the, the, the people are the ones that are the, the, the tough, <laughs> they're the ones that sometimes need to be trained. That's not, not what we're talking about here, but yes, very definitely, definitely. And it, it's uh, the other thing when, you know, we're talking about all these different ways that the, the pictures and the so on and so forth, it's really something to remember when you are communicating again with an animal. And, and I repeat, when I say animal, I mean all of nature, um, but the word anima means, means spirit, breath, like, you know, living the, the, from the Latin word. So, um, so remembering that, like an example that I like to use if, is if you're, if you're trying to train a dog that's barking too much, what do we say? No barking stop barking well the picture you're giving them is barking barking, barking barking so they're confused because they think they're doing what exactly you have to tell them you have to imagine you have to picture the feeling what how whatever you want how what you want them to do you know if you want them to stay out of the street you don't go into your fear of them running into a street because that's the visual that's the visual that you're sending them uh, the visual, I think, I, I, what I found is that the visual and the feeling and the emotion is even is much stronger than the words when we're yeah. talking about communication here. Yeah, yeah. I, I know I send pictures with a feeling and um, that seems to that seems to be how most of my communication is. I was always jealous of people who got words because I never the the odd animal I would get words because it also seems to vary a little bit by animals like I and and most of it, my conversations are concise and and whatever but once in a while I would get it what I call a chatty Kathy yeah. <laughs> that, would just, that would talk and talk but I always said Carolyn when I teach people to train horses the animals in the universe don't hear the word don't <laughs> So if you're training a horse and you're saying, don't buck, don't buck, please don't buck. Just like what you said, I'm giving them a picture of them bucking and bucking and bucking. And finally, after three or four of these pictures, the animal says, that's what you want. Okay. And I, you know, and I think about people who are so worried about not getting in a car accident and then they get in a car accident. And because we, we send out the picture of what we don't want. William said that once worrying is praying for what you don't want <laughs> exactly and actually and you just hit on something too is sending out the picture because mm -hmm. when you're really trying to communicate it's best not to send out yeah. it's best and and i'm sure we're going to get into how you know how we recommend people do this but it's best to just quiet and be in still message after message i'm, I'm always i ask you know the 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 tree the animal what you know how what what do you recommend how do we tell people to do this better and it's always to be in stillness we've yes. got to quiet you've got to quiet that busy mind and and i it you know again it's interesting that especially when i started i was doing the like the automatic writing when i was with the animal but to me i know that that was because it was keeping my left brain busy <laughs> Remember, I'm talking about, you know, the, the analytical part of me, I needed to keep my left brain busy, as opposed to just, you know, totally being then, then and it was coming and it was, it was, um, and I was writing it, but we need to be in stillness. I mean, the, the very first message I was, you know, when I was taking my class, well, in retrospect, I realized that I had gotten them many times before, but you're just, again, we're not aware. But the, the, I, I went out to go talk to that same, I mentioned a horse gypsy and I was standing in for, she was in her stall and I was, and I was, I was so excited. Oh, I was so excited to do this. And I'm standing there, you know, I'm like, hi, my name's Carolyn. And now I'm, I was, you know, we were, we were sent out to try and, you know, to have a conversation and, you know, will, will you work with me? And I'm really excited to be here. And I like, da, 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 you know, I'm going on and on and on and on. And the first words that I clearly heard were be quiet. <laughs> I was like, okay. And I think I spent, I, I don't know how long I sometimes say, I think I spent the next 15 minutes trying to quiet my mind because I kept 
we're, we're not used to that. We're, we think about what we're going to say next in a conversation. We don't, many people are not really good at listening and hearing, mm -hmm. and you have to shift into that quiet mode, uh, receptive mode, if you will, but that just means stop the busy, busy mind. You know, we, we, we send out energy like a fire hose. You're not going to get too much back. There's, there's no room for anything to be coming back. And I think that applies with all communication, let alone animals. So it's that being in the stillness and shifting into that receptive mode, because otherwise you're not going to, you have no opportunity to hear or feel or see or sense anything if all you're doing is sending out. I think I love that because I, and I think that's probably why I didn't, and I tried for years, to, well, months to learn animal communication and with books and courses, and I wasn't successful <clears throat> until I, I took this Tao of Aquas course. But I think my mind was so busy that um, it wasn't until I learned Reiki that I could really quiet my mind so that you, and you do need to be quiet in order to do animal communication i always tell people that even just having other people in the house that other people's energies that i had to be aware of yeah. was a little too much for me so i would book all of my professional animal communication sessions when the children were at school um mm -hmm. because i you know if there was a lot now i can sort of cut through some of the busyness but um, at first, I certainly couldn't and uh, just needed it really quiet. So, mm -hmm. Carolyn, both of us teach animal Reiki, and I'm often asked the question, what's the difference between animal Reiki and animal communication? And I know sometimes people want, you know, wonder which class they should take or one or the other. And, and I tell them it's very different. But how do you, how do you explain that? Well, I guess I would say um, at least in the past, I would say that animal communication um, is about that deep connection where you feel or sense or hear or know what the other being, animal or you know nature being, would like to share with you, which is sometimes my question to them. What do you want? What do you want me to know? Sometimes I have a question, but a lot of times it's just, what do you want me to know? So I, you know, and, and it's um, people very definitely can do animal communication without Reiki. Yes. Can do animal communication without Reiki. However, the, as we've both already shared, what, what the Reiki has done for us is, is put us, help us to be, to learn, to be in that meditative quiet state where we're much more open. And well, in fact, I'll give you an example. When I, when I took that first course, that first weekend, the animals were really clear that they didn't want me to be doing Reiki, which shocked me because I was so used to automatically just doing Reiki. But their point was, um, this is for you to learn and you're not going to be in, we don't want you in the giving mode. We want you in the receiving mode. I understood that right away. Instead of me focusing on, on trying to give to them, they wanted to, me to focus on receiving from them information. Um, and healing and everything that comes along with that. So yes, you can do communication again without Reiki, um, but Reiki does, doing Reiki for an animal does move us into that connective space. And in fact, even more, you know, I, again, I've, I've done it since I first started with Reiki because of my love of animals, but with the new animal Reiki classes that you know we have with the International Center for Reiki training that that you thank you thank you thank you from the bottom of my heart Pam you and and Colleen and and Robin and Sue the, the new class that we that are teaching that we're teaching is um, has its own energy and frequency and it is a really deep Reiki in itself a really deep connection with the animals and with nature so it it. A lot of people just bought that animal Reiki class are very definitely opening to the communication because it's already putting them in that space where they're in that quiet space. But um, but I do think sometimes there is that like, again, as the animals told me, being in the receiving as opposed to the sending and sometimes it's both. 
Sometimes it's just that melding. So I'm not sure if I'm explaining it exactly what the difference is. How would you say it? What would you explain the difference between the two? I guess when I think about it, I just think about my course and the fact that um, that it is so different that in, in my class, you know, we talk about the things that can get in the way of animal communication, like judgment and projection right. of, your, of your own ideas and um, just a lot of the things that we have to unlearn. And we talk about things like the animal's perspective of death, which is so different than um than what most of us as humans um you know believe so it's so i really try to take people into um a lot of the understanding of where the animals are coming from so that they can shift into that perspective so i guess i just i'm very i'm not very good at explaining it but i guess i try to explain that you know one is about sharing reiki the other is more about sharing ideas and information. And sometimes you may get ideas and information through the Reiki, and sometimes you may get a Reiki session breakout through the ideas and information. And in fact, most of my sessions are combined, you know, almost every time. One of the things that surprises me is that many, many times my uh, I'm contacted by a person, an animal's caretaker, who um wants me to communicate with their animal to help the animal and once i connect in the animal says oh good you're here she really needs your help or he really needs your help <laughs> and so the from the animal's perspective they kind of i i think been involved with orchestrating it so that their person can get some assistance because it's such a beautiful back and forth between the animals and their people so i don't know if i said that very well i mean i think when all is said and done it's you know hopefully everyone just follows their own guidance as far as what class they take or you know who they take something from that's all any of us can do but but just adding to what you just shared about the animals calling calling someone in to help their person i i sometimes share a story this this happened a lot of years ago but one of my friends was asking me to connect with her cat, who I knew well. His name is Michael. The cat's name is Michael. And she asked me, could you, she said, he's like getting up at like four o'clock in the morning and he's got this, ah, I mean, she's this really unusual, you know, meowing. And, and she goes, I just don't know what's wrong. He just keeps waking me up doing this. And when I connected with the cat, I, I, I'll, I'll never forget it because I was as shocked as anyone else. What the cat told me he was doing was chanting. Wow. And when I said chanting, <laughs> a little bit surprised, he said, am I doing it wrong? <laughs> like, oh, and then he said, she needs to open her throat chakra. So he was, he was trying to get her to chant. So he was like you said, he was totally grateful that I was connecting because now I could tell her that, you know, what the reason was and what he knew she needed. So, uh, so, you know, it, that was what that was all about. He was just trying to help her, you know, and now as I say that, you know, this, this, this chanting cat, um, you know, as we find what, you know, animals are, I sometimes want to say like people in that, you know, some animals you're going to get philosophy and some yeah. animals are going to want to talk about their blue ball. You know, I mean, it, it's <laughs> and some are funny. And I mean, it so you don't I, I've learned to have no expectation and to just be open without labels, you know, and think, oh, he's a cat. So he's probably going to X. You know, I've had more than one cat tell me that the reason they purr is to is to get their their they usually say parent they almost always say mom and dad you know but to get their their people to um come into a peaceful frequency that's that that's why they purr so it's, told me that they regulate our heartbeat and they yeah. slow our heartbeat when they and that's why a lot of times they go on our lap or our chest so that they can slow our heartbeat right so <laughs> so again you can you know you can have the philosophy and all the different things that they can teach us or you can have, um, you know, I, I shared this story before with Pam that I one time did a distance session for friends, you know, the black lab, playful black lab, 
who could not understand why I couldn't play with him. It was a distant session. I wasn't physically in his presence, but I was so real to him that he didn't understand why I couldn't play with him. So there, it was a little difficult to explain to him why I couldn't, couldn't play with him. But again, it's just this, this, the difference in the animals and you know where, what their perspectives are. And you get some animals who can like reach right in and get that one thing that you don't even want to admit to yourself sometimes that they'll, they'll, they'll nail you with it. Well, yes, I like, know. You know, that, that, again, going back to that first conversation with Gypsy, I thought she was going to tell me all about how she liked being a horse and eating hay and, and whatnot. And, you know, that kind of a thing and why she was there and how about her horse friends and that kind of a thing. That was my expectation as I was starting with this. And, and what she did was at the time, this is again, many years ago, I, I was, I had a fear of my own power, uh, you know, and, and I understand, you know, then I came to understand that accepting your power is understanding that a higher power works through you. But um, it, she, without, you know, she, one of the first, after she told me to be quiet and then had me sit there for a while until I could get quiet, she, she pretty much, she said, you know, you, you've got to let go of that fear, you know, that, and I was, I was astounded fear. And, and that's not why I was there that weekend. I was not, you know, it's like, you got to let go of that fear. She said, you tell me that I'm magnificent, but you're no less. It, it was, she really gave me what for she was, she was pretty serious about what she was telling me. And that was, you know, again, not what I expected. So I've learned to just be open and they can be funny. Yes. They can, you know, um, I, I think sometimes too, it's about speaking through their perspective. Yes. You know, it's going to be different. Like I, I one time had, I, I've done some volunteer work at a rescue center near here. And I actually, the, the director asked me to communicate with an eagle that had come in that was that had wing damage. And um, so I sat in, which she does her own, but she does it in a different way. So she wanted me to connect with the eagle. So he was ma oh, magnificent. He just is, he just was this mag majestic bird. And, you know, I, so I sat down and explained who I was and asked if he wanted to say anything. And after a little while, he said to me, are, are you a mouse catcher? You know, I, I knew I didn't make that up because I'm, like, I'm, I'm a mouse catcher. And he repeated it again. Are you a mouse catcher? And it took me a few minutes to understand that the humans, he, he wasn't used to humans, and the humans that he had been seeing were bringing him mice to eat. And where do you get a mouse other than to catch it? So that was his correlation with humans was, are you a mouse catcher? I mean, he knew enough to be afraid of humans, but are you a mouse catcher? So sometimes there is that, that awareness that they're, it's like talking to a, to someone from another culture. They don't yeah. always necessarily have the same kind of a viewpoint that we have. Have you found that to be the case? Have you had any? Oh, I really have. And I, I love that you brought that up, like, and the perspective, because that's the whole purpose of this podcast is to have an opportunity to interview different people so that we can get all these different perspectives on Reiki and, and living life. And I love talking to people from different cultures. And the same way I love talking to different animals. You had mentioned that, you know, some just want to talk about their ball and like just the depth of conversation. Mm -hmm. Most of what I, most of the clients that come to me, there's a healing component involved. And because I say a prayer and say, just please only bring me the clients that are supposed to, that need me, that need my special like perspective or take on it. And, um, and I know that sometimes an animal will be like, this is the problem. This is the treatment. This is what they've got to do. Da, da, da. Tell them to do this, tell them to do that. Sometimes I'll ask an animal, you know, your per, you know, your person says you're not well. And the animal will say, I know. And I'll say, so what's going on? I don't know. I was hoping you could tell me. And it makes me think of a human in a doctor's office. You know, some will go in just, you know, I think it's this, I think it's <laughs> And some will go and go, I don't know, this is just, you know, so it's so interesting to get 
all of those perspectives. But I love Carolyn, I, I just want to swing back because I'm realizing that in our very first conversation, my first conversation was also with a horse, and I wasn't there uh, for what like they were very similar the the horse wanted me to open my intuition and I had been deliberately not opening my intuition I was very scared of it very um frightened of the the power that that it had and and didn't understand it and and I just kept saying no that's not what we're doing today I just want to learn to be a better horse trainer I'm just trying to learn to train horses better um can you help me with that and the animal just kept saying open your intuition open your intuition <laughs> no so I think so many times when we become open to the communication and open to their perspective, they become our teachers. I've learned more from the animals. And like you, I have a lifelong love. I studied a degree in science, in uh, agricultural science, and all about the animals, and started off in pre veterinary medicine. I love animals and always have. And yet it's been when I kind of learned to step back and look at things the way they did. I've learned more from that than any of my education or schooling or. Yeah, I think oh. I would agree with that. And, and again, going back to the gypsy, she, you know, there were a couple of things that she said to me. And then I, as I re, remembering that this is really the first time that I was aware that I was communicating. I, and again, I was writing everything down and I find, I just said, I was thinking, I didn't even say it to her. I was like, am I making this up? And she said, no, you're not that good. <laughs> she was like, you know, it's like, you're not that talented to make this up. I'm like, all right. I mean, she, she told me, but it's like, it, and, and again, you know, these things that go through your head, it's like, it's, that's not me. I would not, I would sometimes say like mouse catcher. I would not use those words. I get pictures of carrot, bags of carrots and I know that that's not me. <laughs> that's my horses saying, bring me bags of carrots. And I, and I remember coming in and relating a conversation from one of our horses, Jasper. And my husband was still on the fence about whether this animal communication was real or not. And he looked at me and he went, that's funny. And I said, I know. And he goes, you're not funny. <laughs> Oh, thank you. No, no, I'm not. And he goes, okay. <laughs> I don't think you made that up. Like, I don't think you're capable of making up something funny. <laughs> and, and again, talking about different perspectives. Uh, one of my, I love this story. Actually, it was one of my teacher stories. It wasn't mine. It was one of Dawn. She, she was doing a, a reading for actually with somebody in our class. And the woman said they had, she had a golden retriever and she had I don't know, three or four cats and they all had free reign of the house. Well, a friend of hers who had gone through a, a breakup was, you know, came to live with her and she was in her room, staying in the room and she had her own two cats, but they, she kept the cats in her room for a while until they were going to see how everybody was. So she was keeping the cats in the room, but the dog was like totally intrigued and kept sitting outside the room like you know and she said can you i don't understand why he's doing that can you can you ask him why he's sitting outside her room and when she connected with the dog the dog said where's their dog because he's he knows that he lives with cats so he's and he knows there's cats in the room so he said where's their dog and then he said did they eat him <laughs> I mean, he just, he like, he could not comprehend or figure out where, why are they, where, why don't they have a dog? This is the way his life is. So again, it's that different perspective of, um, and, and, and it can be funny. They definitely, they, I mean, I've had, you know, more stories about, um, you know, the, I, things that again, you just really don't expect them to say. So, and, and then, and again, I just love to ask them, you know, what do you want to tell me? And I, like, I, it's what you just said, Pam, I've learned so much from different animals. Um, in, in fact, I'd like to, can I share a story? Would it be all right if I, would. Yeah. yeah, I would like to this, I was really feeling called to share this story. This is from a, um, a she was a thoroughbred horse. Her name is Mariah. And um, I, she was just, you know, in her stall, happily in her stall. And I realized that she had 
like an opalescent sheen over both of her eyes. And right about the time that I thought to my and realized that she was blind, what I heard her say was, you don't need eyes to see. And, and I, I'm going to read some of that. I, I already shared that I like to read. So I actually have, you know, things written down. And I, when she, I heard her say that, you don't need eyes to see. And then I just asked, I introduced myself, which I like to do. And I asked if she would like to talk with me and, you know, um, if, if that was okay. And she walked right over to me and she kind of put her head like her third eye to third eye right to my head. And I could feel her trust. I, I mean, I had this deep, deep feeling emotion of, of trust and, and I thanked her immediately. And she said, we really see when we look with our heart. Hmm. And then, and she went on, I said, what is important to you? And she said, gentleness and peace. When I first lost my sight, I was so scared. And Dawn later confirmed that she was born with sight, but she had an illness at a young age. And that's when she went blind at a very young age. She said, my world changed and I saw only darkness. I was terrified. And then slowly I learned that I had never really seen anything before. You must look with your heart to understand. You must open your heart to see. And then she paused and she said to me, you fear your vulnerability. Whoa, there we go. Right to the heart of it. I wrote chills of truth ripple through my body. And I'm always amazed how animals can reach in. And I, but I couldn't deny it. And I just said, yes. And she said, look at me. I did it. And so can you. You can learn one step at a time. Let down your guard and open your heart. Once you understand, you will no longer fear. You have compassion. It is necessary along with gentleness because the world can be harsh. But gentleness is strength. Wow. She said, and I still, she said, I still get scared sometimes, but look at me. And I found myself like looking into that opalescent and, and I kind of went into a meditative state where I, then I closed my eyes and I saw her like sheen bubbles of light is the way that I saw her essence. And she said, and she, I, it's like, I could feel her smile. And she said, you begin to understand tell them look with your heart these are not empty words i have lived this lesson and then she just she again she took me into she started walking around her stall not touching not knocking over the pail she was just totally walking around and i felt i closed my eyes and i felt like i was riding a horse with the you know wind moving through and just a whole different experience and she said now do you see and then then she said no pun intended <laughs> i mean even you know right then and there but then this is the other part that i just wanted to share i said um she said now you must learn to look from your heart with your eyes open it's easier for me she said and i just said how do i do that and she said, be as a child, open and curious and living in the moment. It's really all you have. And then I just asked her if she had anything else to share. And she said, yes, you hear with your heart too. So, I mean, that's the kind of lesson. And I think it's a, it's a story that I was really guided to share today because it is how we open to communicate. We have to open our heart. And I, I, I think that's the way that you teach it also. That's I where we start. That stillness. Heart. Yeah. Yeah. And get still. And how, what was that again that she said? Open. And I, that was beautiful, like a child. And she said, oh, be oh. as a child. Wait, um, where is it? I've got pages and pages. And pages. <laughs> be as a child, open and curious and living in the moment. 
I love that. Like that's basically the formula for happiness, right? And the yeah. formula for living your best life. Those three, those three tips. And communicating. And communicating. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. It's all there because you, I, as we've said, I mean, those are the steps you have to be instilling. And that childlike wonder and appreci appreciation is another thing that I sometimes use with the animal. Just looking at them and, and appreciating and marveling at them, or the flower or the tree. And when you moving into appreciation also helps you get into that without the thinking, 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 thinking. Yeah. I agree. I do have a funny story about a tiger once though at a zoo. And I know that they don't want to hear things like, you're so beautiful, you're so beautiful, or, you know, but they will accept that feeling of appreciation. And, uh, and I also, uh, I talk in my class, I don't know, Carolyn, uh, about what you think about this, but I talk about permissions and how important it is to have permission, not only from the animal to talk with them, but also from the animal's caregiver because the, the person that's connected with that animal is um, they have a caregiver and they have a, a divine life purpose together. And so just out of respect, and there's always people that say, oh yeah, but, and I'll say, let's just think about it this way. Imagine somebody going in and doing something with your animals that you don't understand or don't like, or, you know, just, or without your knowledge or permission, how does that, that feel? And when I really take people into it, they, they feel that way. But animals that are in the public domain, you can usually just connect with. So I connected with this stunning tiger and he, he looked at me really surprised and he went, you can hear me. And I said, yes. And he just stared at me and I stared at him and I gave him a feeling of appreciation for him. But I wasn't going to talk about does he like it there or anything like that because what am I going to do about it if he doesn't like it, you can't it's not okay to talk to an animal about anything that you can't affect or or make a change about so I just stood there with appreciation and he looked at me for two or three minutes and then finally he said well you don't really have anything interesting to say <laughs> and he walked away <laughs> and I, I thought that was brilliant <laughs> Great. I find I get the one who can hear me and doesn't have anything to say. Anything decent to say, <laughs> yeah. like nothing interesting at all. <laughs> yeah. But I I that's a, an excellent point though, Pam. I do agree on the permission. I do I definitely agree on the permission. And the other thing too is the animal, I, I have absolutely no doubt that every animal hears us, but they don't always want to communicate. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can we can say that about ourselves. We don't always want to talk. They don't always want to communicate. They might not want to communicate with you, but they might not want to communicate at all. You know, and, and people like when they're doing training, you know, then the, the animal doesn't understand. Yeah, they do. They might not want to do what you're asking them to do, but that doesn't mean that they don't understand. So there's that awareness too. So I use that as an example to say, if you're trying to communicate and you're not getting anything, then just be in appreciate because that's going to happen. So yeah. just be in appreciation. It doesn't, you know, we have a tendency then to get right down on ourselves and like, oh, I knew I couldn't do this. So it's it's just being aware. So, I've learned to go ahead and ask the animal before our session, will you talk with me? Because I I sometimes I would get into the session and the animal would say, I'm busy. And I, <laughs> what are you busy doing? Sleeping or yeah eating or playing with my friends or you know licking myself and i'd be like well could you take a break and and talk to us and then i realized that i wasn't being respectful enough of their time and their participation so i after a few sessions where i had to rebook for another time and or you know or send a refund because the animal was busy and and couldn't talk with me um, I learned that when I booked the session, I go ahead and connect with the animal and say, look, your person has booked a session at 2.30 on Tuesday. Are you going to be available? And then even if they are eating or playing with their friends or whatever, when I go in to connect, they're like, right, I was, you know, I said I would be available. And then they. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Because you're right. They don't always want to. And what we don't necessarily deem important, like it's very important sometimes for uh, an animal to be 
that's the time that I play with my friends. And this was a horse that told me that. And this was the time that he would be turned out with his friends. And the rest of the time he was in his stall. So he wasn't going to give up his, his exactly. friend time to exactly. talk with me. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't blame him. Right. So Carolyn, this is, um, this is wonderful. I just wonder before we move into a meditation, if there's anything else that stands out to you that you'd like to leave people with today about animal communication and Reiki and um, I, I actually I, I think just just kind of the, the recapping on how to do this certainly if you have Reiki activate your Reiki be Reiki you know start the Reiki for yourself and get into that Reiki place if we want to call it that which is my way of saying moving into stillness Another way of saying it is, you know, I mean, sometimes when I'm even want to do journaling, it's like I, I can feel myself start in my head and then I totally just bring my awareness down to my heart because that's where you want to be to yeah. stop that busy mind. But if you do Reiki, by all means, again, I'm going to say start with self Reiki. I'm not even saying start with Reiki for the animal. I'm no. saying start with self Reiki to get you into that that quiet place um, of moving into stillness. And then I, I physically, well, I physically, that's the wrong way to say it, but I intentionally open my heart. Yes. And, and as you say, a heart to heart connection with the animal, um, you know, use again, use your Reiki, use the distance symbol for your highest self to their highest self. You can use, um, if you use, if Karuna, you can use the Ava for that communication. Um, and yeah, just make that. And then say, once you're in that quiet place and you've opened your heart, then you just simply say hello or namaste or whatever words you want to say to start. Don't start. Hi, my name is Carolyn. And I want to talk to you. And I like, I started the first time you just sit back and, and pa be patient and ask if they do want to communicate. So the, that I just wanted to sum up about, you know, how, how people, cause people say, well, but my left brain and left brain people will be like, tell me, tell me the, how, give me the steps and tell me how to do it. And, and then in general, that's how I say, would, do you say anything different or would you say something specific? No, well, there was uh, something I was thinking of that I wanted to add and it left me now, but, um, but I definitely uh, start in the heart and um, let them take the lead for sure. Um, and uh, yeah, there was something that I'm sorry, I, I, I'm so interested in listening to you that, uh, that I lost it. Um, oh, I know one of the things I did want to mention is it can be harder to talk to your own animals, yes. than someone else's. So if you're, you know, I, I encourage my students as they're practicing to see if they can practice with other people's animals, because it, you, you don't hear your animals as well. I, I was embarrassed my first time because that was going to be the first exercise was to go out and communicate with the animals. And everybody in the class trotted out and then uh, the, the, te the instructor's mom was helping and I went to her and said, Marilyn, I can't do this. I've been trying for months and I can't hear the animals at all. And she said, no one can hear their own animals, Pam. They're too emotionally involved with them. Go out and see if you can hear ours. And then they had taught us how to make that heart connection. And that's the secret right there. And to get still. And I, I, I was writing as well. Um, and I couldn't write fast enough. The horse actually came up and put his head over my shoulder and started wiggling his lips on the page because after he was done with messages for me, he actually had messages for her. So I think that was for his, his person, his, his owner, which was the girl who was running the, the clinic. Mm -hmm. um, so I did want to mention that, that that can, so if you do have someone else's animals, and it makes no difference whether an animal's deceased or living, I find. I, in fact, I can't quite tell the difference. Like there's, when I connect, I can't tell if an animal's deceased or living, if I'm connecting at a distance. Right. Then that's why it's really like difficult. Like, you know, none of us ever want to do it and it's a missing animal because you can't oh, tell. A no. lot of times you can't tell if they're, because they're just happy. So you can't tell if they're here or, or there because, and, and which actually brings up another that we touched on 
you know, that's another thing that always, the question that always gets asked is, is I can say without hesitation that I've never met an animal who hasn't been willing and wanting to move on, you know, to, a, yeah. you know, you never, if, if the animal has come to the end of their life, you never make the decision. If you have to actually take them to the vet to help them, you never make that decision alone. You wouldn't be thinking about it if they weren't. Most of the time, they're still hanging on for us. They know it's not the end. They're ready to move on. And they're only hanging around for us. So I, I always do like to bring that up because I think it's really important because most of us, you know, kill ourselves with that. You know, why do I, why do I, do I have to do this? Why do I have, but it's, it's acknowledging the, and honoring the spirit of the animal and what, what we know for them. So I think actually that's in the animal Reiki manual. Are you prolonging their life or are you prolonging their death? I think that's the wording and I thought that's a beautiful way to say it. So I always do like to bring that up when I'm talking about communicating with animals because you just don't make that decision alone. You won't make that decision until they're a hundred percent ready. And again, it's usually you're the one that has to be ready. Quite often the animal's ready much before the human. It's, it's usually yeah. us and they'll hang on beyond what they are comfortable hanging on un until we can get ready and you know I had a dog that asked to be put down as soon as she became incontinent and I just said I'll I don't mind I'll just pick up your messes that wasn't what she wanted and she hung around for three more years because she knew that I couldn't do it until she died a natural death but we looked back on that and went you know um we had her hang on much beyond what she would have wanted to and so i mean we're all that happens to all of us you know she was just so sweet i couldn't let her go and she forgave me she forgave me for that because she knew how i felt about her and that yeah so i think that's those are some excellent points to um end on well carolyn i wonder you have a beautiful meditation that's inspired by one of your teachers and i think we're going to just mention your uh, her book in yes, I would, links. I um, would love to. Yeah, um, one of my teachers. Um, I, she's not the one I originally studied with, but her name was Penelope Smith, and Penelope Smith taught animal communication for thirty five years. She has retired, um, so she no longer. I was in her last class because I I just was able to get in. Um, but I, I think of her, as she, she's like the grandmother of animal communication because she was doing it long before anyone else thought that there was anything to it. And so I recommend anything by her. But one of my, my favorite books by her is this book. It's called Animal Talk. Um, and it's by Penelope Smith. It's just that easy. The, the book as it's selling right now on Amazon actually has a different cover than I love this cover, but it has a different color cover than this. And it's called Animal Talk. And it would be a good place to start when you're talking about um, communicating, wanting to begin to communicate. But she has a meditation in here about um, becoming an animal that I that we, we'd like to do. We're going to go, I think we'll go a little bit over here, but I can shorten the meditation a little bit with the hopes of having you move into shifting into an animal's perspective so it gives you a different point of view that will help you with communicating when you're trying to communicate. So if we could do that, Pam, that sound like it's, that's okay. That's great. I love it. So I would invite you to be comfortable, sit back, lean back if you're not already there and, and close your eyes and take a couple of really, really nice deep breaths. If you are tuned to Reiki, then put your hands wherever you're comfortable on you and let the Reiki flow. Feel the flow of the, of the Reiki as you take, again, those deep breaths and feel your connection to the earth. Send those roots deep down into the earth, feeling yourself centered and grounded. Breathe Reiki into every cell. And be receptive and childlike. What does that mean? Curious. It means curious, open. And now I would like you to either choose an animal or a nature being or simply allow one to appear to help you. 
Imagine them very clearly and notice their physical features. Now notice something you've never noticed about them before. And just allow yourself to feel their essence, their being, their spirit. And now notice their breathing and begin to synchronize your breathing with their breathing. Make the conscious intention now to open your heart and allow yourself to shift gradually until you feel that you are inside the animal's viewpoint. See through their eyes. Feel your feet on the ground or your body in contact with the environment. Notice how your body parts feel. Legs or other appendages, head, skin, fur, fins, leaves, feathers, If you can, move around in this animal body. What do you notice about your environment? Now allow yourself to express emotions through your animal body. How do you do that? How does it feel to sense or smell or hear or touch? Meet another animal of your type. What is your response? And now approach an area where there are humans or allow some humans to come near you. How do you feel about them? Establish any comfort, any contact that is comfortable for you. Do you perceive their thoughts, emotions? How do they feel toward you? Ask a question or try to get something you want from a human. How do you do that? Do they understand you? How are you different from humans?
how are you the same? What things are most important to you? How do you feel about yourself? Now go back to your favorite environment alone and just allow yourself to experience and enjoy this animal body, this nature being. Just enjoy. Now become aware of your breathing once again. And slowly shift yourself from the animal form back to your current human viewpoint. Once again, looking back at that animal or nature being. And how do you feel about them now? What do you know now that you didn't know before? And then when you're ready, take a couple of really nice deep breaths. Bring your awareness back to your breath. Breathing back into the present moment. Open your eyes and come back. Pam, you're on mute. <laughs> Thank you, Carolyn. I know some people might like to take some time to write down about their experiences. I just loved that. That was beautiful. Um, thank you so much for being on the podcast today. And I just want to say thank you to the listeners. So glad that you joined us. And please join us next week where we will be. Um, what is next week? Talking with William Rand about Reiki and the environment. <laughs> and I, no. I just, just like to just sum up really, really quickly to say, give it a try. You've got nothing to lose. Open They'll make you laugh, they'll make you cry, they'll teach you, they'll open your heart and they'll help you to understand. And just, just to completely end with, with the words of Corey the Lama, what Corey said was, tell them how easy it is. You need only listen and believe. The world is a magical place and anything is possible. Oh, I love that, Carolyn. So anything is possible, believe and just try. You won't be disappointed. So thank you, Pam. It's been wonderful. Thank you so much for having me. And thanks to everyone for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you. Namaste. Namaste.